Hi my loves, thanks for returning. I hope this video finds you happy and doing well. As you know by the thumbnail, this is gonna be another unpopular opinion video, but this time I'm gonna be talking about things to avoid while in a relationship. So if you're interested, then just keep watching. All right, so before we get started, I wanna get a little housekeeping out of the way. If you are a returning subscriber, I love you. Thanks so much for returning. If you're new here, my name is Bridget. On this channel, I do skincare, makeup, with a little bit of lifestyle sprinkled in. So if that's your cup of tea, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love to have you join the family. All right, so I'm just gonna talk about things that you wanna avoid before you begin your next relationship. Or if you're already in a relationship, you might want to stop doing them if you're already in a relationship. You know, a lot of people have opinions on what you should do and what you shouldn't do regarding relationships. Uh, some good advice, some bad advice, uh, and of course that's all relative. But with that being said, I would say just to consider the source. I am 50 years old. I'll be married 25 years in July. So most of my ideas are probably going to be a little bit old fashioned, but that's okay. Old fashioned is sometimes good. Okay. If you don't like old fashioned, you can let me know down in the comments, but I'm going to talk about these things and most, all of them I have experienced and made the mistake of doing um, and as with other people that I know. And if you are in a relationship and the end goal is to be committed or be in a monogamous relationship or be married, then this video is for you. Some people don't want to be married. They don't want to be committed. They don't, you know, so this might not be the video for you if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for commitment, this video is for you. So these are some things that I think that you should avoid before you begin your next relationship. I mean, and even you can avoid or either stop doing these things if you are currently in a relationship. All right. So the first one is knowing your value and knowing your self-worth. When you begin any relationship or while you're in a relationship, it's important to know your value and your self-worth. You never want it to be ambiguous uh, what your value is. And you definitely don't want anyone to undermine you or treat you less than. If your value or self-worth depends on external factors, it just makes things unstable. It also sets you up for people taking advantage of you and using you, and that's clearly not anything you want. So if you want to know your value and self-worth and start feeling good, you have to start living the life that you were meant to live. And once you begin to do things in life that bring meaning, then you'll know your self-worth and self-value. To me, that's one of the uh, probably the most catastrophic things or one of <laughs> the most catastrophic things a person can do is to go in a situation, a relationship or a work relationship and not know their value. Always know your value and never let anyone try to demean that or tell you that you're less than. The next one would be a super unpopular one and that would be putting your relationship on a timeline. If the goal is to get married, avoid being in a relationship for years and years and years and years and years and years, and years before you're married. In my opinion, and just things that I've noticed and seen over the years, not with just myself, but with others, is that it doesn't take forever to decide if you want to be with someone. And for someone to tell you that it does, I think that they are mistaken. In my opinion, if they, if you're in a relationship and a person doesn't know within a year or two tops, then it's time to move on. In case in point, I'm sure all of you have heard of this before, but have you ever been or seen a girlfriend or someone else be in a relationship with someone for years and years and years and years? Okay. They break up. Okay. And then um, your girlfriend or your friend or whomever tells you that I'll just use the name Roger. She says, Roger is in a relationship with someone else. And then you find out a year or two later that he's marrying that person. Okay. Time and time you see situations like that. And to me, that's like a clear indicator that it doesn't take 
all these years to decide if you're in a relationship like that in my opinion the person uh, more than likely is leading you on or stringing you along if the goal is to be married just move on cut your losses and move on it really doesn't take that long and if you're thinking oh I don't know everything or most of the things about this person well I've been married to my husband for 25 years and I don't know everything about him <laughs> And I know y'all might be looking like, girl, you don't know everything about him at 25 years. Nope, sure don't. I learned I learn new things about my husband all the time. So ladies, don't waste your time, especially if you're young. Go ahead and move on to the next one because he knows and he probably knows within six months or a year. Uh, if he wants to be with you, a man knows what type of woman he wants. It's not it's not rocket science and it's not brain surgery. So, yeah. One to two years tops. All right. So the next one is sex. Ladies, avoid having sex until you get married. And I know you're like, oh, no, she didn't. OK, well, avoid it for as long as you can, because I have to say that, you know, when I look at social media and how things work, sex just means less and less and less. It's meaning less from when I was young back in what the 80s. I graduated in 1989. It means even less from when my parents were young so and it comes a dime a dozen seems like everybody's having sex with everybody and anybody and for whatever and however and then there's these uh situationships and friends with benefits and all that other stuff which exposes you and puts you at risk you know that's a whole nother different video but it just means less so if you are in a relationship with someone and you tell them, well, let's just wait. I don't want to do it on the first night or I don't want to do it on uh, three months later or four months later. Um, and he's like, oh, I got a hand. You can best believe he's getting it from somewhere else, but you still have the upper hand because you haven't given away your body. You haven't given away your temple. Treat your body as your temple. And I know that's like so old fashioned. People just don't do that anymore. But, you know, it will be refreshing to you if you just say, hey, I'm going to take a chill pill on this. Trust me, that is not going to make a man leave you. And if he does, then he's trash anyway. He's straight up trash and you don't want trash. That's how I tell my daughter. You don't want trash. You really don't. <laughs> OK, is somebody going to leave you because you won't have sex with them? OK, but for you in your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, you will feel so much better. Just you know, just hold off on that. It's not going anywhere. All right. So next up is try to avoid not asking about their background, like their family history and things like that. And that might be a little bit too nosy, but it's like a necessary evil. I have seen where people, you know, I'll ask questions. Well, well what about their family? Or what, what can you tell me about that? You know, oh, well, I didn't ask. I don't think I should ask. If you are in a relationship with someone, especially in the beginning, you know, and I really want to emphasize the beginning of a relationship, always ask about the dynamics of their family. Ask if their parents are together or not. Ask them how their father treats their mother. Ask them, is their father an alcoholic or does their father do drugs or do their parents do drugs? Things like that. Most times, however, the dynamics are in the family. That's a good indicator of how that person will treat you in a relationship because that is what that person has learned. You know, that's what their person has grown up with. Plus, uh, in talking about people who drink or do drugs studies suggest that or studies show they don't suggest they show that if a parent is alcoholic let's say or does drugs that they can pass that down to their children so when you are in a new relationship or even when you're thinking about a new relationship ask about their family history you know you can bring it up casually and if you're a nosy person like me it would be easy for you to ask those <laughs> questions but to me those are so so important because that's going to give you a baseline okay and baselines in relationships are always good to have so that's just something to look into do you want to stop being with them or quit them or leave them alone 
Not necessarily, but that just kind of lets you know what could arise or what probably is something that you already have to deal with. So that's just something to look at. All right, so the next one is overstepping your boundaries. You always want to avoid that. And what do I mean by that? A good one would be if you're in a relationship with a guy and let's say he makes $60,000 a year. Okay. And, um, you, you ask him, well, can I have $800 <laughs> to go shopping or can I have $500 to go shopping or can you buy me this expensive purse or can you take me there? You know, asking for things from, um, whomever you're in a relationship with for things that you know that they can't possibly get you, you know, that they can't afford to get you. Or if, um, you never want a person that you're in a relationship with to feel inadequate. You know, those are the type of things that over time can make a person resentful towards you. You can, it can make them run to another woman, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, don't overstep your boundaries with whomever you're in a relationship with. Stay within those boundaries so everybody can be happy. All right. So the last one is uh, avoid any bad habits or rude habits or disgusting habits. And that can be relative. OK, because in my opinion, let's say smoking cigars to me would be probably be a bad habit. OK, <clears throat> for me. OK, and to somebody else, to another couple who smokes, that wouldn't be a bad habit. So, you know, that's kind of a relative term. Now, what I can say that's not so much relative, let's say you are you're used to cussing your significant, your significant other out when you all are in a disagreement or you like to hit when you're in a disagreement or you like to throw things. Well, we would kind of, I think everybody would agree that that's a bad habit. Avoid any type of bad habits. Just leave that behind, leave it in the old relationship. If you're doing it now, consider stopping because it's really, really not a good, uh, healthy thing to do in a relationship. So just avoid all those bad habits. So that's it. Short and sweet. Those are the things that I wanted to talk about that you probably should avoid when beginning a new relationship or even in your current relationship. Let me know what you think about each talking point. Do you agree or do you not agree? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for tuning in and until my next video, smooches.